Well, I have been manifesting this interview since I started this series. My brilliant guest today can make even the skeptics believe in magic. If you have ever asked me for a book recommendation, I 100% have urged you to read her internationally best-selling All Souls series because it's equally magical and entertaining as it is smart and romantic. She's an author, a scholar, a teacher, and executive producer on the series' stunning and critically acclaimed TV adaptation. Deborah Harkness, welcome to the middle. Oh, Ashley, thanks for having me. What a lovely, generous introduction. Thank you. Of course. Thank you so much for being here. But before we get started, I actually read yesterday you went to Hatboro Horsham High School. Are you from Bucks County? I'm from Montgomery County. I, I grew up a block away from County Line Road. Are you from Bucks County? I'm from Newtown. I went to Council Rock. <laughs> and, and I oh, man. I had no idea that you yes. were from that, that area, too. Yep, there you go. Give it up for Bu Montco, Bucks County. There you well, go. I used to do theater at the um, Town and Country Players Theater, which is right in Horsham, right? Yeah. Yeah, I used to do theater at Bucks County Playhouse. It's such a small world. That's so crazy. Such a small world. That's amazing. Yes, and I, we'll, we'll just shelve the Council Rock Capra Horsham rivalries. Yeah, shall I mean, I didn't really do sports anyway, so it's funny. <laughs> okay. <laughs> All right. So first, give me a brief synopsis of the series for those who haven't experienced the books or TV show yet. So the All Souls series is about a reluctant witch named Diana Bishop and a 1,500-year-old vampire named Matthew to Claremont, who meet in Oxford, where Diana is on sabbatical. We love a sabbatical in academia, doing research on a book. And Matthew is working quietly away in his genetics lab, as vampires do, trying to solve the mysteries of, of the universe, life, and everything in it. And um, as, you know, as of course is going to happen, Matthew and Diana um, end up falling in love. And it puts a strain on all of the things that they believe to be true about the world and their place in it. So in the world of the trilogy, um, vampires, witches, and demons are living alongside humans in plain sight and um, have suffered a lot of human prejudice because they are different. And as we know from our own experience, human beings are not always kind to people who uh, are different. And so we follow their adventures uh, throughout the three books of the first three books of the trilogy. We are really focused on Diana and Matthew. And we follow them as they try to find a mysterious manuscript known as Ashmole 782. And that adventure takes them back in time um, where Diana and Matthew look for the book in sort of its you know, more native habitat. Um, and then return to the present with a whole new set of skills and knowledge, um, information about magic, information about the underlying science, and um, use what they've learned to work, make the world a better place. So that's my synopsis in a nutshell. How did I do? Oh, you did incredible. Everyone needs to read this. Everyone needs to experience because you write with such detail and, and maybe, correct me if, if I'm wrong, but is that because of your your background, you're a historian. So you write with this historical ac accuracy that it feels like witches and vampires and demons have to be real, right? Right, right. I mean, I, I've been a historian as I started my BA in 1982 at Mount Holyoke College. So I've been studying this period of history for a very long time. I've only been writing novels for a decade. But I've been a historian for, for, you know, a long time. And I've been a professional historian, a professor of history for, for a quarter of a century. So, you know, this, um, the, the novel thing is just like the latest little bit. Um, but one of the things that always struck me was that um, how clearly the people are fascinated with the past. Mm -hmm. And they're fascinated with stories of magic and witchcraft and why do people believe this stuff and how do they believe it? And, and I just, you know, I study a period where a belief in, in magic and witches was, everybody had it. And it was completely kind of fit in with scientific beliefs. That's not true today, right. but we're still fascinated. So I kind of wanted to pull all that stuff I knew about how magic worked in the early modern period. I wanted to pull it all forward and put it in modern day as though 
the people in the 16th century had been right all along. Right. So do you believe in magic? Yes. Right. Um, awesome. If by magic, what we believe, what, what we think is something that falls outside of our human, ex of, of our scientific explanations in a given moment. So I always tell my students, if you, if, if a 16th century person dropped into your house and you walked over to a wall and touched it and a light on the other side went on, they would all think you were a witch. Right. Because that didn't, yeah, it didn't exist. Yeah. Well, how, magic is action at a distance. It's, you know, whatever. So I believe that there are things that we still don't understand how they work. I agree. And I think that's what magic's always been because that kind of, that's power, right? If you can, if you can walk to the wall on the right and touch it and a light on the left get, shows up, what else can you do? I mean, that's amazing. Right. So now we have an explanation for it. One day, you know, it, we'll have an explanation for things we might think are supernatural now. And the supernatural will just move. It never will disappear. It'll just move slightly, you know. Absolutely. And has anything, I, I also think too, when you're paying attention to things and you're putting your energy in certain places, you start to observe more and you start to kind of open your eyes to things that you may have not have done before. So since you began writing these novels, has anything magical or supernatural happened or even when filming the show or have you noticed anything or have there been any moments where you're like oh my gosh <laughs> it, it's, it's real <laughs> the cast and crew were absolutely convinced that one of the places they were filming in italy was haunted really absolutely convinced of it i was not with them to give expert testimony but they all came back and they said oh my gosh it was there there is def it was definitely haunted. I have to say that you know most of my magic like Diana happens in libraries or in book when I'm writing. Uh -huh. So I will actually say that there are these moments where I will be writing along and I'll think, okay, well I should, you know, check that or I should make sure I'm okay with with that history. And I'll kind of do the research and I'll find that like, oh, I this is even more perfectly did I know that or what's going on here? So it is, I, I do have these moments that I, I call them, I call them my, I do call them my magic moments or my hat. It was meant to be moments where it feels like somehow, you know, uh, the, the author of the, um, the Little Prince said that all stories ever written were out in the air, in the atmosphere, and that all a writer did was sort of channel them down onto the page right. there are moments of writing where i think okay that's so spookily perfect i there there has to be like you know a higher power in, in and kind of, yeah like helping you weave yeah. it together it's so weave it together yes. i see what you did there yes so <laughs> it brings me to my next question so shadow of the night shadow of just, yeah shadow of night i always want to say shadow of the night it's just shadow of night I know we got rid of all the articles in that shadow of night. Yeah. This is your favorite book in the series I've read. And this is the basis for season two of the show. So did your love for this chapter make it easier or harder to adapt? Harder. Why? No question. Um, and that's because it is the historical thing that I've been doing since, you know, 1982 without interruption. So, you know, I don't have, I don't have a whole lot of uh, skin in the game of which Oxford street Diana rides her bicycle down or um, what color coat she wears, right? You know, fine, great, wonderful. <laughs> I have a lot of opinions when it comes to 5090 England. And it's mostly because what I see on screen is unrecognizable to me often. And I know that a lot of people have spent a lot of time trying to make it look and feel right. right. But, um, but so many decisions get made when doing television, understandably about aesthetics, sure. um, about budget, um, about, you know, practicality. You know, if you're, if you're gonna be rained on, in a scene, are you really going to wear, you know, a, a seven thousand dollar velvet gown, or are you going to go for? It? So 
you know, so it, it was hard for me because um, there were certain things that just couldn't happen. There are certain things that could happen, but only at the expense of something else equally important not happening for budget reasons. And, and it was, so it was a real learning experience. I, I mean, the team were amazing. The, the production designer, the costume, wardrobe, everybody, the props department, amazing. Because they really listened and they would be, they would, it was, they were like Deb decoders, right? So it was like, okay, so, so are you objecting to the color of the ink, the handwriting, um, the paper it's written, you know, cause I just look at something and say, well, that's not right. Right. <laughs> you know? <laughs> and, and so it was, it was, it was an education for me as well about, you know, you know, what is the important thing? What is the thing we really want to get across and how, and not to be quite so fussy and precious with it and to, to really figure out like how it was going to work. Um, so yeah, it was, it was, but it, there were moments when I think they were ready to absolute, I mean, they've just thought, Oh God, why did I take this job? I'm confident of it. And, um, and there were moments when I thought, Oh my God, this was such a mistake. And then you see it and it's just, I mean, I've only seen the trailer and it gave me chills. The it's, yeah. I mean, first season is so well done. The casting is perfect. Did you, did you have anything to do with casting by the way? Yeah, yeah. I did. Yeah. I don't have control over casting um, because that would be way above my pay grade, but I do get to, you know, have thoughts about it and to register my opinions. And, and more than anything else, you know, with a huge fan base of the books, I didn't want to send any actor into the lion's den. Can you imagine? No. Hiring an actor and then being like, okay, well, not sure you can really do this, but go with God. And then having, you know, Everything. there be yeah, outrage. And Madness. so for me, it was absolutely, you know, they had to be able to convey the essence of the characters and they're complicated characters, especially vampires. I wouldn't want to do that, but is, you know, Lindsay Duncan, Matthew, good. J Wait till you see James Purefoy as Philippe. Um, Marcus, Ed Blumel, I mean, is just brilliant as Marcus. Does he look exactly like Marcus in the books? No. Is he Marcus? Absolutely. You know, so sometimes again, you have to be open. Yeah. And I love that as a, as a reader and a viewer, I feel like it's you, you know, you always have something in your mind based on the descriptions and based on everything. Yeah. And then I love when I see the character on the screen and it's not initially who I would have thought, but then I'm like, yes, this makes so much more sense than what I thought. <laughs> well, and you know, I got to tell you like Isabel, um, I mean, there's Isabeau, it's really hard to find, you know, it's fine for me in the book to say, well, she looks like, you know, she could be Matthew's age. It is much harder to find an actress at that age who can convey that they're 3,000 years old. Right. Yeah, there's so, there are so many layers to all of these people. It is so incredible. Um, what else? I feel like I have had questions for you since 2011, and now that I'm talking <laughs> <laughs> Think about it. That's a decade. Um, That's a long time to hold those questions in. <laughs> no, you, this, and wasn't it originally supposed to be a movie? It was originally optioned by Warner Brothers okay. um, for, for a film. And if you can imagine trying to smash the eight episodes of the first series into a 90 minute film, you can see why it's not. Right. No, I'm so glad because even, even with eight episodes, you want, you want more, you want to see every little detail. So. I'm and we, I mean, and look, Warner brothers is the best in the business. And we had Denise Denovi and Alison Greenspan as the producers attached to the project. If, if, if Alison and Denise could not do this with Warner brothers, nobody could do it you know and I think that was where we really got to this point where we were having to cut so much that it was just becoming a love story and as you say that's really not what the books that the books have that in it but that's really not what the books are about fundamentally and it's funny too whenever I'm talking about the books for someone who doesn't know I whenever you say you say which is vampires demons sometimes people think oh that's not for me I'm like wait no 
Do you are you know? Do you like history? Yeah. Do you like vivid do you like science? <laughs> yeah, you, like they're so read it and then tell me you don't like it. And I've never had anyone take my recommendation and say I don't. They're always obsessed. And I have to give a shout out really quick to my sister in law Veronica who introduced me to the series. She's so excited that I'm talking to you today. <laughs> so. <laughs> Thank you, Veronica. We like that. We like when, you know, uh, so many people share the books with their, they, you know, they found it and they shared it with their mom or their mom found it and they shared it with them or sisters and sisters-in-law, you know, right. and, and, and these little families have grown up around, around these books. And one of the things that's really exciting for me as an author is, as you, you know, you read these a decade ago. Um, so there, there were people who were eight when yeah. a Discovery of Witches came out, and they missed Discovery of Witches, the book, completely. But they're ha now they're 18, and now, and now because dead. of the show, they're coming back to it. So it's so exciting for me because I, you know, a whole new audience is coming to these books, and I would like to think that some of the things that are discussed in it about difference and diversity um are really timely maybe even more timely now than they were when the book was written in 2011. I think so absolutely everyone needs to read the books I have them all here one's in my book stack constantly behind me. I was um, noticing I thought that yeah. looks like a familiar book spine right there. Yes and then are, oh, will there be another because you have yes yes there will I'm about 400 pages into um the book five. Oh my gosh, that's such good news. The best news, I love it. So everyone read the books, watch this season, watch the series. If you haven't seen season one, watch it quick. Season two comes out on Saturday, January 9th in the US on Sundance Now and on Shudder. Deb, thank you. Where can people find you um, on Instagram? What's your handle? Oh my, at Deb Harkness. Awesome. Cause I'm casual that way. So yeah, you can find me, I, I promise. I'm on, I'm on all the platforms, except I don't TikTok yet. Uh, I, I don't really either. I'm trying. No, can't TikTok, but you can find me everywhere else at Deb Harkness. So. Perfect. Deb, it was such a pleasure to meet you. Ashley, so nice to do. Thank you so much for inviting me. And uh, I hope you like season two. Let me know. Gosh, I will.